let's run another one of these uh, graphing examples down. Um, pay no attention to this uh, waffled out business over here. Uh, who's to say if I wrote a different example at first and then realized uh, it wasn't going to do what I wanted it to do? Uh, who's to say? Nobody's to say. In any event, the example that I do want to do is this one. So g of x is negative 2x over um, x squared minus 9. So let's run through this. Same thing, same uh, same steps. Let's go. Uh, step number one, let's check for symmetry. Symmetry, question mark. So this is subbing in a negative x. Let's see what's going to happen here. So this is negative 2 times negative x. So that's going to flip, right? That would actually give us positive 2x. The bottom, negative x, so square root of minus 9. Now this is interesting, right? So the top flipped. The bottom is only a squared thing. So the bottom is going to absorb this. So this is a positive x squared minus 9. So, so the bottom is still the same, but the negative has flipped. This would be the same thing as if we did a negative version of the original g of x, right? If I sort of did everything times, if I, if I, if I did a negative 1 times the whole thing, I, I could essentially attach it to the top and flip from negative 2x to positive 2x and then the bottom would stay the same. Um, so this is going to have symmetry and this is going to be symmetry to the origin. Um, so that's going to be the kind of thing where if I do a positive 2 versus a negative 2 what I'm going to get in my graph are sort of positive and negative versions of the same y outputs. I should sort of be getting a mirror image on the left and the right but it's going to be a flipped image from the um, the y perspective. Uh, so it's we call this a little bit of a diagonal type of symmetry um, in any event. So that should be kind of that should be kind of cool. Um, y intercept is next. Now I just said y intercept, but of course there's one and only one. <clears throat> so that's going to be our value when we sub in 0, g of 0. So that's going to be negative 2 times 0 over 0 squared minus 9. That's a 0 on top, and then it's over a negative 9. That's going to make the whole thing 0. So that's going to go through our origin, 0, 0. Um, that was the same coordinate we had for our y-intercept in the last one. That's going to be semi-common, right? Of course, not all of them will have that as their value. Um, but shows up again, not a big deal. Um, it is what it is. Next, we'll do our x intercepts. We'll sort of keep in mind uh, the potential vertical asymptotes as we go. So, again, this is from setting top equal to zero, and we need the bottom to not be zero. So, what's are we working with here? So this is negative 2x equals 0. That's going to happen right when x itself is 0. If I check it in the bottom, uh, we kind of have been through this already, right? 0 squared minus 9 is negative 9, which is not 0. So our x-intercept here, we kind of know this already from the y-intercept work, right? If we go through the origin, that's both an x and a y-intercept going right through the center of the graph. Um, so that's going to bear only x-intercept. We just have this sort of minus 2x up top. Obviously, the sort of more complex and sort of bigger the polynomial up top, the more potential x-intercepts we could have. Um, in theory, right, the bigger and more complex uh, polynomial we have in the denominator, the more potential uh, vertical asymptotes we could have. Let's do those next. So this is sort of the reverse of the relationship we just had. We need the bottom equal to 0 and we need the top to be non-zero. Uh, what should we do for our color? How about the blue now? So what is the bottom? The bottom is x squared minus 9 equals to 0. This is going to be nice factoring. This is our difference of squares again. Uh, so x plus 3, x minus 3 equals 0. So that must mean that x itself is negative 3 or positive 3. Um, 
in the top, right? We're not going to be zero at either of those. We kind of know that, right, from the work we just did. We sort of found all the points where the top is going to be zero. Um, so if these are different values than what we just uh, saw in part three, then we're kind of good to go without necessarily having to do a full um, extra check. So both of those will be vertical asymptotes. They won't necessarily be the holes or the gaps in the function. Um, step number five, that's going to be our horizontal asymptotes. Rather, I should say horizontal asymptote. We're going to have kind of one or none. Um, so this is sort of slash our end behavior. So looking at our sort of leading terms, so this is going to be what? Negative 2x over x squared, right? So the question is that relationship right between the degree of these two. This is one where the bottom degree is bigger. The bottom is the higher power. This is, of course, would just be x to the 1. Um, if the bottom power is bigger, that means we get a horizontal asymptote, and it's going to be at y equals 0. So, so that's actually the line that, that lines up with our x axis. Um, so the x axis itself, as we get so further out to the edges of our graph, is going to be a horizontal asymptote for us. Um, let's line up so we say our vertical asymptotes, our x-intercepts. We need to get our function values, right? We need some test points um, in between those things, in between our x-intercepts and our vertical asymptotes. So the table of extra values. So we'll list them over here. We'll do the calculations over here. So our y value, which is our g of x. So what do we have? There is the symmetry thing going on, right? Positive and negative 3 here and here. Um, so we have those. That gives us one of our vertical asymptotes and then the other. Um, and then in the middle is our x-intercept at 0, 0. So what I need then around that are test points that are sort of just in between all of these values. And then, of course, at the edges, we'll just use our sort of nicest possible values. Um, we'll use sort of 1 and 4, positive and negative. And again, what should be happening here, if this is symmetric, whatever we get for negative 4 and negative 1, we should get sort of the opposite values for positive 1 and positive 4. Uh, we'll just start from the top and go from there. So let's just do the most natural thing. So g at negative 4. So negative 2 times negative 4. Negative 4 squared minus 9. What are we going to get here? This is 8. This would be 16 minus 9. So this is going to be what? A positive 8 over 7. Okey doke. Right. So that's like 1 and 1 seventh, a little bit bigger than 1. Uh, at negative 1, so negative 2 times negative 1, negative 1 squared minus 9. So that's going to be positive 2. This is 1 minus 9. So that's 2 over a negative 8. So these are actually pretty small, negative 1 quarter. We might need to kind of keep these values in mind when we do our scaling on the graph. If, if we get kind of small values like this, it might be the case that we need to um, kind of graph accordingly. Let's do our positives here. Negative 2 times 1. And again, what we kind of expected is we would get negative 2. Yeah, and that's going to happen, right? Negative 2 over negative 8, which would be a positive one fourth, right? So we're getting the same kind of value, but we've flipped the sign. In this case, I guess, sort of uh, what you would maybe hope um, would happen is the positives give positives, and our negatives gave us negatives. This is going to be what? Negative 8 over negative 7. So that's going to be a positive 8 over 7. 
so positive one and one seventh. Um, that's all of our info um, laid out. So asymptote, asymptote, x-intercept in the middle, horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So going through the x-axis. Um, let's do a second video uh, and we'll actually do this sketch. So make sure you have all these notes down and you have the reference from Canvas um, and then we'll go through this sketch together.